Hello and welcome to Your Daily Five with myself, Jane Galena, also known as Airplane Jane. I am out there on social media at Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, my website, cjanetrade.com. And if you ever have a question, please feel free to reach out to me at jane at cjanetrade.com. All right, let's get into it. Last time I was talking about DXY, which is huge right now. We have a lot going on around the world with economic plans, stimulus. We saw the Bank of England get bailed out. We saw the Bank of Japan get bailed out. We have Janet Yellen talking about buying US treasuries. Wait a second, I thought she was in charge of the treasury and not Fed chairman again. What's she doing talking about buying back? So right now, looking at DXY, we can see that we've started to see with all the corrections by the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, that the US dollar is starting to pull back from its highs, right? We had this high back here, just the end of September, and it's pulling back a little bounce, and now we're pulling back down again. In fact, just October 25th, there was no bid for the US Treasury's two-year bonds. That's not necessarily a good thing. That could mean that people don't necessarily wanna hold the US Treasury. So when we look at this, I did use the US dollar index bullish fund so we could see these shelf volume levels to see where the big guys are laying their footprints. Remember, I do follow the dark pools, so I follow the volume. I look to see where they are putting their money in, where they are taking it out. So we see that we have pretty strong support back here, which is roughly October of last year, right? So when we look at this, we can see October last year, roughly 25.25 on our weekly chart. We'll step it up right here. 25 25 really that support level once we broke out up above above that we had big buying right here the green is the buying volume and we continued to surge up we are moving higher and now starting to test a support level from september late august and looking to see where this will take us from here so if we look back again that level was October of 2021. So if we look at the dollar index, all right, here we are, October 21, that's gonna bring us back down below $95, right? So keep this in mind, we are up at 110 at the moment. We could see that this pulls down quite a lot to bring us down to that almost par area. We might see that we go par to par at one. Now, what does this mean for silver? Well, as we see that the US dollar fund was dropping, what happened to silver? Yes, silver, the inverse relationship, we started to see that this is moving to the upside. We did have a triple bottom, a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders right here. We did move up, pulled back again as that dollar surged again, right? We go, if we look at that dollar index, we can see that when it dropped, we raised the silver price. As it gained again, we dropped the silver price. Now that we're seeing that the DXY is starting to drop again, we're seeing silver rise. Now, in my personal opinion, I love physical silver because if the currency goes through with hyperinflation, they say we need to print more, we need more quantitative easing, even though we want to try to keep inflation under control that that is going to decrease the buying power of the US dollar and will likely increase the cost of silver, physical silver, spot silver. So I do like this to the long side as long as we can hold this level which has pretty much stood as support for a long time. In fact, all the way back in 2018, there were big, big buying prints and then we surged higher, right? 2020, we had this major surge in the valuation. Back in 2008, silver went up almost 300% during the downward turn. 
So this could be a good potential hedge, in my opinion, for the downward turn that we're likely going to see in this marketplace. When we look at the silver contract, this is the monthly. You can see, again, 2008 drop down and a major surge to the upside. When we look at the silver trust, maybe you don't want to buy physical silver, there is PSLV, Sprout Physical Silver ETF, where you could potentially convert it if you had enough shares into physical silver delivery, somewhat like a silver futures contract. We can see back here, we have this big buying level, right? We've been testing it. We see over the past couple of months, since July, we have held support roughly 660 area right here. And as we break out, there's been more buying. People have been buying it for quite some time, but it did break down a little bit and we have support down here. So looking for this to break out above that 740 level as we see the dollar decline on the DXY index. Again, bigger picture, weekly chart. You can see we have strong buying, 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 buying. And that 680, 660 level over here, we can see that we have quite a bit of support right there with the buying volume, but also on the chart, right? If we were to go below 650, maybe we're gonna drop down to $5. That would be an incredible bargain in my opinion. However, I would use 650 as my stop with potential for this to head up to 20 again, in my opinion. Next up, I mentioned the dark pools. We see lots of movement in the dark pools on Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which tends to lead to a bigger move on Bitcoin. So just recently, in the past 48 hours, we have seen 1.6 million on Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And it's roughly where we are right now right so looking at this we are butting up against this bigger volume equi volume candlestick right here butting up against it so if we see that we have grayscale bitcoin trust going up above probably 1350 i'm a full-on bull on bitcoin yeehaw let's go dark pools buying however if we come down and we break down below 1150 1180 watch out it could get really ugly for bitcoin those longer term holders that are thinking unfortunately like the ape army as well that thinks hey i'm just going to hold on to this forever well it might end up turning against them and turning against them hard when we look at the weekly volume you can see that we have come and we're hitting that support level right here however there was big selling here as well right so we are testing that 20 SMA on the weekly chart today. And we could see that this rolls over and comes down further. Look at that, $5 support down there. That's big ways to go. But let's look at the Bitcoin chart, right? We have this support area, roughly 19,000, I believe it's 18,750 that I would watch. If we go below that, we are quickly going to come down to that 13,000 level, 12,500 level over here. If we break below 10, watch out, we'll likely be going down to 5,000. If you do like my charts, here we go on the, the weekly as well, where we could see this continue to move down further. This is a, uh, this is scaled, right? So you have to see that the movement, 200 to 1400, is a lot greater than 14 to 19. So if we start to see that we come down again to that 12 level, watch out, we could go down a lot further. If you all do like my charts, my analysis, please come on over to my YouTube live stream for members every morning that the market is open at 8.15. As I always like to say, carpe profit, seize those profits one trade at a time. And that's your daily five with Jane Galena. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.